Okay, so in this video, we will introduce linear equations. Let's look at a few examples. 2x plus 3y equals 4. This is a linear equation in two variables, x and y. This is another linear equation now in three variables, in x, y, and z. And here's one last example. This is now a linear equation in four variables, x1, x2, x3, x4. So what is, if we look at the general concept of a linear equation, what is a linear equation? Well, look at the left-hand side. All we have are real numbers times the variables, and we add those up together. You see, some multiple of x plus some multiple of y equals a constant. Some multiple of x, if you think of it here, plus negative 2 times y, plus some multiple of z equals a constant. And here's some multiple of x1 plus negative 1 times x2 plus 4 times x3 minus, or if you think of it, plus minus 6 times x4 is equal to 0. So a linear equation in a given set of variables must be of this type, a sum or difference of real multiples of the variables being equal to a constant term. And this is a linear equation. Let's look now at examples of non-linear equations. Say in the variables x, y, you could have x squared minus 3y is equal to 5. This is an equation in the variables x and y, but if you look at the x term, it is not simply a real number times x, it is actually x squared. So because of this term, the equation is actually non-linear. We could look at an example with three variables x minus 2y plus sine of z is equal to 1. Here's an equation again in three variables, x, y, and z. But if you look, we have 1 times x, so far so good, minus 2 times y, so far so good, plus. And the third term is not a multiple of z. It is the trigonometric function sine of z. So because of this term, the equation is also non-linear. And we could give obviously an example with these four variables. So in general, a linear equation will consist of the following objects. So we can take, say, n real numbers, a1, a2, up to an. So there's our constants. We'll also take a constant b, and we'll take n variables, x1, x2, xn. And here, n is a positive integer. n could be 5, it could be 7, it could be 24, any positive integer. So we have our n real numbers, our n variables, and a constant term. And a linear equation must be of this type some real multiple of x1, the first variable, plus some other real multiple of the second variable x2, plus up to a n, some real multiple of the nth variable xn, equals b, this other constant term. So this is a linear equation in the variables x1, x2, up to xn, and we give a1, a2 through an, a special name, we call them coefficients. The multiples of the variables are called coefficients. So a1, a2, up to an are called the coefficients of the linear equation. Obviously x1 through xn are the so-called variables.
And finally, this other constant, b, is called the constant term. So the three parts to any linear equation. The coefficients, the variables, and the constant term. Now, every time we have a linear equation, we will try and find all possible solutions. Let's consider a simple example. Let's go back to this one. 2x plus 3y equals 4. Okay, well, how do we solve this equation? Well, we can isolate x as a function of y, so subtract 3y on both sides, and you'll get 4 minus 3y. Finally, divide by 2, and so x will be equal to 4 over 2, 2 minus 3 half y. And so you see this was the original linear equation. And when we ask for solving such an equation, we're asking for all real values of x and all real values of y that will satisfy this equation. Well, this equation is equivalent to this one, and so you see, we can let y to be any real value of our choice. As long as x equals 2 minus 3 half y, the equation will be satisfied. Well, how do we write this properly? Well, and we call this set of all solutions the solution set or the general solution of the linear equation. Same thing. So every time you're given a linear equation and you're asked to solve the linear equation, what it means is to find all solutions the solution set or the general solution. As we have just said, y can take on any real value of our choice, so we usually will use a different letter, and we'll use, say, t. And we'll specify explicitly at the end that t is allowed to range over all real numbers. And t is what's called a parameter. Okay, but now that you choose t, so t can be chosen to be any real value, then you don't have a choice for x. x must be 2 minus 3 half of y, but we have let y to be equal to t, so we replace y by t. And then we have our solution set. For any choice of t, if you replace y by t and x by 2 minus 3 half t, you will have a solution to this equation. Before we verify this, one last comment, or actually two last comments. The first is x and y are a different of a different type of variables. You see that y was simply allowed to be given a free parameter, and so we call y a free variable. but we were able to solve for x as a function of this parameter, and so we call x, and this will become clear in future videos, a leading variable. Okay, now that we have our solution set, let's ask the question, can we perhaps simplify it a little bit? Look at this fraction here, 3 half of t. Well, the rule of t is to range over all real numbers. And if you think of it, if t can range over all real numbers, so can 2 times t. And so we can replace t by 2t, and this will eliminate this fraction. So we can write our solution set in a slightly different form by eliminating this fraction. Let's do so here. So instead of writing y equals t, we'll write y equals 2t. 
Again, t is allowed to range over all real values. And now x becomes 2 minus 3 over 2 times now 2t, which will give you simply 3t. And now you have a simpler solution set. Now let's verify that what we have is indeed the set of all solutions. So 2 times x, x is 2 minus 3t, plus 3 times y, which is 2t. And let's see if for any choice of t, as we claim, that this is equal to 4, hence we have a solution to the original linear equation. Let's multiply out. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 6t, plus 6t. And so obviously for any choice of t, negative 6t plus 6t is 0. And so we get 4. And so this shows that indeed for any choice of t, if we let x be 2 minus 3t and y equals 2t, we have a solution to the original linear equation. Well, let's consider now an example of one linear equation in three variables. And we'll see that there's not much that will change, except for the extra free variable that we'll obtain. Suppose we considered 3x minus 2y plus 5z equals, say, 6. Now we have a linear equation in x, y, z, so there are three variables. And again, we're asking to solve this linear equation to find all solutions. Well, we'll do the same thing as we did in the previous example. We'll isolate x. So 3x will be equal to 6 plus 2y minus 5z, isolating x by multiplying by a third on both sides, x will be 2 plus 2 thirds of y minus 5 thirds of z. So we've solved for x as a function of y and z. And so you see that the original linear equation is equivalent now to this equation. So we can see that y and z are allowed to be any real number of our choice, but once we choose y and z, x has to be 2 plus 2 thirds y minus 5 thirds z. So once again, y and z will be three variables. So they will become parameters. But now we'll use two different letters because y can be allowed to be any real number that we want. So we could call it, say, s. And z can also be any real number of our choice. We can use t now. So s and t are parameters. So they are both allowed to range over all real numbers. So now we have two parameters. And then x must be 2 plus 2 thirds of y, but we've let y be s, so it's 2 thirds s, minus 5 thirds z, but we've let z be t. And now we have our solution set. For any choice of s and t, if you replace in here s and t by the appropriate value, we have a solution to this linear equation. OK. So here, because y and z are parameters, they can range over all real numbers of our choice. y and z are called, again, free variables. We were able to solve for x, though, as a function of those two free variables, and so x is, once again, a leading variable. Before we verify that this actually gives us, for any choice of s and t, a solution to the equation, we can once again do better. Notice that there's an s over 3 here, and there's a t over 3 here. So if we replace both s and t by 3s and 3t, this will eliminate these two fractions. So let's do so.
And again, because s and t are allowed to range over all real numbers, the same goes for 3s and 3t. Again, we have to be explicit that s and t are allowed to range over all real numbers. And now x will be 2 plus 2 thirds times now 3s, which is 2s, minus 5 thirds of now 3t, which is minus 5t. And now we have a solution set to our linear equation without any fractions. So this is a little better than this one. And now let us verify that indeed, for any choice of s, any choice of t, if you let x be 2 plus 2s minus 5t, y 3s and z 3t, you will have a solution to the original equation. For example, you could take s to be pi, t to be root 2. You could take x to be negative 1.43, t to be 1 over cube root of 17.3. No matter how you choose s and t, you will always have a solution to the linear equation. So let's verify this. So 3 times x, 2 plus 2s minus 5t, minus 2 times y, well minus 2 times 3s is minus 6s, plus 5 times z, 5 times 3t is plus 15t, and will this be equal to 6 for any choice of s and t? Let's see. Let's multiply out. So we have 6 plus 6s minus 15t minus 6s plus 15t. Well, clearly for any choice of s, 6s minus 6s is 0. And for any choice of t, obviously, negative 15t plus 15t is also 0. And so the equation is always, the e expression, sorry, is always equal to 6 for any choice of s and t. And this proves that this is our solution set. And you can see quite easily that as we add, say, a fourth variable, a fifth one, and so on, it will be quite redundant. We'll simply have more free variables, more parameters, and then we'll solve for the first variable as a function of those free variables, and in this way we'll get the solution set. So as far as a solving a single linear equation, this is the end of the story. It's quite easy. In our next video, we will consider now something a bit more interesting and challenging, solving systems of linear equations. Not just solving one equation at a time, but solving simultaneously several equations at the same time.